Um, so we've had a few technical glitches tonight, but we seem to be back on track yet again. So that's terrific. Matt, that was a fantastic um, presentation. Thanks so much um, for that. And um, I think it's got all of us thinking about lots of questions we'd like to ask of you. I've seen lots of them coming up on chat. Um, so I'm just going to remind everyone um, that uh, all questions have to be put on the Zoom group chat function. So you just need to go down to um, <clears throat> the three dots at the bottom of the screen. Uh, it'll say um, chat and just go into that and uh, or a set of bars. That's the other function that usually appears. Um, and just write out your questions. So we've got quite a few already emerging. Um, so I might just throw to the first one, actually. Um, Peter Norden, um, how do you assess the current influence of the local Catholic church, purely reactionary or more diverse? Peter? Oh, that's essentially the question, Matt. You, yep. you, you mentioned 85%. Uh, a Catholic, and it's probably more than nominal in largely reactionary. We mentioned the big push around GLBTI, mm. or is it more diverse than that? And is there any possibility of outside Polish influence? Yeah, um, good, good question. And it is, it is it is more diverse than that. It's just that it seems to be the people in positions of power, particularly around the east and south of the country, um, um, within the church, are very influential, and that just taps into that taps into the law and justice's um, base as well. Um, in some of the larger cities, there's yeah, a bit more of a um, um, diver diverse opinion. But, you know, um, it's still pretty, it is very strong across the board in, in, in Poland. And I just, as I say, um, I'm surprised by how many um, young people are still aware of and um, proud of the, the Pope, Pope John Paul II. Um, I, I yeah, can't help but um, assume that it has such an influence as well. Terrific. What was the second part of the question? Sorry, Peter. Uh, uh, probably. Is there any uh, role for outside Polish influence? I mean, there's more progressive people, say, even in the Polish church outside of Poland, but I don't mean just church. But yeah. Is, to other people who, you know, Poland sent a lot of people around the world. And uh, I, I just wonder sometimes, you know, whether the out, you know, people who have benefited from post-war migration really have a responsibility to, to feed back and contribute back. And sometimes they're very reactionary as well. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. Um, and I sort of touched on that towards the end as well. It's very hard, you know, as and, and many members of the Polish community will know, many members from other parts of the world who have set up here in Australia and the USA and other parts of the world. It's very hard to make connections with um, the home country. Um, you know, they used to rely on the community newspapers, for example, that would come out once once a week. Things have things have changed with social media, there's that ability now to connect and to gain, to gain information. It has pros and cons, as we know, um, often you'll just be sourcing information from, you know, it becomes a bit of an echo chamber that you can be, there can be a tendency to just source information from and hear voices that, that you want to hear and don't hear alternative voices. Um, but there, it's, it's opened it up. It really has opened it up. And I, and I think that there are opportunities for, um, diasporas and different communities, you know, across across the world, not just Polish but others, to to make connections with with the homeland. The other thing is some, you know, um, it depends on different countries. It's some some uh, you know expats and the like obviously have um, vote, they have voting rights. And then, um, in fact, if you know, not not so much in Poland but in other parts of Europe, they'll have very strong voting rights, and they might even um, get represent get representatives. Um, so I know, for example, in Italy, the, the you know the Italians can vote um, 
so I'm moving away. Sorry, I'm moving away from um, 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 Catholic Church. But the towns can vote for a representative of Oceania um, um, that goes to the Italian Parliament. Um, mm. So that you know, they're very. As a result, they're very you know switched on and connected when it comes to the political scene because they they can see a benefit out of it. The thing with the um, the what you tend to find though is it's very interesting with the poly situation that I find a lot, but not not all. But a lot of um, um, folks here in Australia tend to be a bit more, I would describe them a bit more centre-right. Maybe it's the people that I associate with, but, you know, a bit more centre-right, liberal. Um, although that does tend to come out with um, when it comes to voting, when it comes to um, you look at the differences between voting um, for, for Polish citizens in, in the country or expats as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Terrific. Um, have you already covered off? Cleo has a question. Cleo, on the question of do Polish social democrats have a lot of links to other European social democrats? Yeah, um, that's what I was wondering. Like, I know, yep. but obviously there's the, um, like the party and the parliament. But I was just wondering if, like, apart from that, like, is there any other links? There's, there's a lot, yeah, it's a good question. <clears throat> I think there should be more. The big one is the, is the progressive, progressive alliance. So that has replaced very much the socialist, um, was it socialist international? I think, um, there were, where, where the socialist parties used to get, get together. Once again, um, it was a lot harder in, in, the, in the past because you, you, you know, we're sending newsletters and uh, mail and flying to places. These days, it's a lot easier with technology. Um, so there's been a move away from the socialist, um, I think it's international, I just can't remember now, to the progressive uh, alliance um, because there was some um, parties that were not democratic that were, that were introduced into the socialist uh, um, uh, international. So... There's that. So the ALP is a member. Uh, New Zealand, New Zealand Labor, UK Labor, for example, they're all a member of the Progressive one. And African parties. Um, yeah, it was set up by the German Social Democrats in 2013. So that's one forum. Then you've got, and I think the um, the European Parliament is is really interesting uh, and really important in this sense because, as I say, they all come together. Twenty seven member states, they all come together to this one location, and there's an opportunity there. And from that spins off, you know, different um, different groups. And so there's an ability there to 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 connect. And I've um, made some connections myself through through that area. So I'd suggest have a, have a, having a look there as well. They'll all have social media pages as well now. Got to have social media pages. And with the European and with the European um, groups, um, they often distribute material in different languages as well. Okay, great. Um, Caroline Mann Smith, are you still on? Line? No. We might go to um, David Redfern. Sorry, I'm here. Oh, you're there? Can we get yeah. your question, if that's oh, all right? Oh, right. Okay. I put that on live. Is that, a, is that a comment or a question? Sorry. Oh, just saying that, mm. um, actually, I went to Poland last year and there's this huge highway being built and we were told there's a lot of EU money coming in. So I was wondering if... Do you think that could be part of the um, success of the government, that many of the Polish people think that all the money coming in from the EU is actually the government providing the funding and the works? There's huge highways going from Warsaw to Krakow. Krakow. That, um, and you know yeah. that it's EU funny because you see the sign, yeah? <laughs> <You see> the... <laughs> oh, I can't I need, did it, that's there a sign there saying that? Because I, my Polish isn't that good. <laughs> it was probably in Polish. <laughs> yeah, it's a good, it's a really important question because um, often um, when, when you're looking at, at Poland and there's issues, as I say, 
uh, le around the judiciary, um, women's rights, LGBT rights, and, and so on. You think to yourself, they remember the e EU, they've signed up to particular rights and obligations, and they need to respect those. But there's only so much the EU can do. But the EU does have legal mechanisms which they're reluctant to use because, you know, once you go down their path, um, you know, it could set off all sorts of um, things. But one, another one is the funding arrangements. And so mm. there's those mechanisms. But from the Polish point of view, they, yes, they have been um, recipients of, of much funding because, um, because they're considered um, less developed. Um, funding is oft often subnational, so it goes down, breaks down into regions. Um, so funding will just go to regions not just the country, but yeah. um, to try and lift up. So what happens usually is that um, the big member states like Germany and France, for example, and the UK, when they're in there, they were contributing funds. Everybody contributes funds and then it gets dispersed out and yeah. spread around to the yeah. less, de less developed, so those cohesion, structural funds, all that sort of stuff to try and balance things up. Yeah. The, the yeah and so it's so infrastructure is something that it's spent on in that part of the world because it was often lagging mm -hmm. um it's something you can see you put money into it you can see oh we've got something new that also plays out with the law and justice party because some people have cons you know they're you're a skeptic you know they do are critical of the eu um mm -hmm. obviously but they're not we're not talking about uh a poll exit um because they understand how much money they do do receive. So they do want to change the EU, but change it from within. That's the, the way they're thinking. Um, yeah. Yeah, it was interesting because Matt and I were having a discussion before this um, seminar and we were talking about, you know, if the EU was to invoke the Article 7 sanctions against processes against Poland and Hungary and suspend their voting rights in the European Council, whether that might be the spur that leads to the mobilisation of a left vote again, because they seem to be having their cake and eating it too. They're sort of, mm. you know, <laughs> um, quashing civil rights on the one hand and um, taking these enormous structural funds, which represent a, a, a massive amount of their budget as mm. a developed um, nation. Yeah. So, yeah. I can understand why the yeah. EU are a bit reluctant to do that, though, and they tried to obviously, you know, it's a, a bit of a last resort because oh, there's a theory, you know, you work in dialogue first because um, it can also play into the hands of the Eurosceptics and we often hear about, you know, far-right Eurosceptic parties taking over Europe. Well, <laughs> no, but... They are making electoral gains, albeit small electoral gains, but they're making it around and cross across Europe. Um, you know, they might pick up ten percent of the vote, for for example, but get seats in the in the parliament, a few seats in the parliament. In other parts of uh, of Europe, they're doing you know, much more successful. In other parts of Europe, they're not successful at all. But yeah, so that it's a bit patchy. Um, but yeah, they don't want to play into those those hands as well. We've got That's two. true, you know, you know, that, that deployment is as much a political diplomacy. Yeah, it's a tricky one. Um, so we've got um, sort of two, two um, comments under the one theme, um, both from Fabian's executive members. So I'll start with David Redfern first. Where do the parties get their support from, geographically and demographically? Yeah, Matt, I was just interested, you know, urban, rural, breakdown, men, women, young, old, um, you know, and, and even occupational, you know, how do the, uh, you know, I guess we're the basis of all these particular political parties, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so the, the Law and Justice Party does well in the east and the south of the country, in the rural areas and the less developed areas. Um, tends to be older, older voters. Mm. Um tends to be men, but not always. Um, in fact, things have changed with the with the, the 500 plus programs. Women are also um, more likely to support them. The, the Liberals do well in the big cities. Um, yeah, so, and then, and then what's left for the social, that's, you know, the question is what's left for yeah. the social Democrats mm -hmm. in, in that sense. They do seem to do well in the, in more, do better in the West, sometimes do well in the North of the country. Um, there's that relationship 
you know, with trade unions as well. But, but um, it's, it's, yeah, yeah. So there's a criticism of the Social Democrats because uh, now that they're actually, you know, I, they're starting to stand up because they're, in, so they're, they're wiped out in 2015 and they're able to come back. Come back, got the, got their act together, but they're they're a coalition of different different groups, mm. but they're you know standing up for these issues, standing up you know finally finally taking a stand. But there's often criticism that you know they're just focusing on identity issues. They should get back to bread and butter. But it goes back to my question of um, you know um, what is the base of uh, and where can social democrats get their support from in uh, you know in this in a different world where where we have less obviously you know less manual workers for example mm. um yeah there's also some rural parties there's a rural party in poland and um, you often get that and they'll be you know just rural interests um regional uh, they tend to be you know regional based so they'll do well in a particular particular area but in and in the main, it's well. In recent times, it's been Law and Justice Party versus the centre right Liberals. Yeah. The centre right Liberals um, uh, often uh, are, are more, you know, liberal in economically. They were, you know, polished, considered liberal in polished terms. But you know, we we would, when it comes to social issues, we wouldn't think so. But they become more progressive when it comes to social issues. Now, some people said, well, that's the reason they lost that election and been able to get back. They went down this progressive path. Um, but it was, research indicates that there was just that, you know, they, they'd been around for a while, a stench of corruption. Um, they had a strong leader who, you know, Donald Tusk, who went to the Euro, Europe, went to the EU. Um, so he stood down and he was replaced um, and uh, by by another leader, but she wasn't able to, um, she wasn't able, she wasn't as charismatic as, uh, as, as Donald Tusk. Mm. Just might also point out that the, um, I was, you know, the other thing with Polish politics is, as I said early on, there's a lot of, um, you know, a lot of men involved. The other thing is that, you know, these folks in the elite of Polish politics have been around for a long time. Um, so, you know, Donald Tusk was, was a candidate in 1991 and so was the leader of the Law and Justice Party. So, you know, in different, um, there was no Law and Justice Party there. So these folks have been around for a while. So they do hold on. It's well, mm. something to consider. So there's an well, issue around the next generation coming yeah, through. Yeah, I was wondering about that, the, the younger people. Where do you... Mm. Yeah, yeah. So the younger people. So there's no... Um, It'd be interesting to note that there's no, unlike um, other parts of Europe, particularly Western Europe, parts of Germany, there's no Greens party. Or there's Green, you know, and there's no mm. particular Greens party that does well. Um, younger people, well, younger professionals you tend to vote for the centre-right. Um, there was, you know, they'll go for the left as well. But they might go for the Social Democrats. They tend to go for more le far left. Now, we've been able to, they've been able to bring them in in the into this coalition but um so there's that issue that connection yeah yeah that fragmentation mm. hey julia would you like to jump in with your question at this point julia thornton okay just unmuting thank you okay um, good have to remember um hi matt um, I was interested in your comment about uh, social media, and it did make me think that, um, you know, they're not that far away from the Russian border. They do have, um, what is it, Belarus in, in between. Um, and um, last night I read a, quite an interesting article um, on from the uh, New York Times on just the level of sophistication of Russian interference in politics via uh, a swag of forms of social, of, of media generally, really, and not just um, social media um, it, the the main gist of the article was that they're just so much more uh, incredibly competent at it um, than they were in 2015 when they first had a go with at the um, with the American re um, uh, elections so 
I'm assuming that there is a level of Russian interference via media in Polish politics. Would that be correct? Now, that is, a, yes. Um, I, I can't say that there is. There should, you would, you would think that that's right. But whenever there's a review of the elections, they, they from independent sources, they come across as free and fair. Um, so it's it's interesting, isn't it? There's I'm not not thinking so much about the electoral process, but the sentiment, the d driving the driving sentiment stuff. Yeah, it's there's always that you know there's always that influence from Russia, particularly in that in that part of the world, and there's that relationship between Poland and Russia, which is really really important. Poland and uh, the Soviet Union as well. So um, yeah, it's there. I just um, feel that, oh, actually, I know that the, the Russians are having more influence in other parts around Poland, other countries around Poland, um, in your smaller countries, as your Romanias, for example, um, and, other, and other parts in some of those non-EU member states. But it's, it's, it's got to be there. It's got to be there. But sorry, I can't answer your question, Julia. But um, yeah, every time I see the election, I know you know you weren't you weren't talking about um, you know, politics and elections so much. But I must say that last two time, you know, last two parliamentary elections, I've seen the results and thought, oh, you know, first thing I do is one of the first things I do is go, oh my god, look at that, it's shocking. Russian influence. Where is it? I go looking, and I can't find it. Um, but they. I, but they have had an impact in the past um, in a big way too um, because, yeah, yeah. Um, well, I suppose we're not going to get tracked by the Russians, are we? But, you know, there's, there's been some issues around um, the leader. So the leader of the Law and Justice Party, he, he's a twin, and his twin brother died in a plane crash. Um, he was high up in Polish politics and his and his wife and and um, this is back in 2010 and the polls blamed russia for that russian yeah. interference yeah that that's played out in polish politics as well the, I, I the, the mark of the mark of successful interference is that it's very difficult to see it um so you know i'm not surprised that you really can't answer that <laughs> Yeah, but just on social media, we are aware of the, um, I guess most people now are aware of the, the farms. So the, the social media farms. Oh, yeah. and so they have all these, you've seen these where with all the, all the phones and it's lined up. And so they'll just be all these bots that are just be, you know, generating and say, for example, with Twitter, they'll be retweeting stuff from a particular point of view. And they're just, just all set up, all these phones just up, you know, phones everywhere just lined up and they're just going bang, 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 bang. They're all connected to each other. Bang, 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 bang. And they're just farm farming this stuff out. Oh. So, yeah. Okay, so there's a whole series of questions around <clears throat> talking about Poland in the region, Central Eastern European countries. So one from Shona around the influence that Poland has on, you know, the relationship between Poland and Hungary. For instance, in the set, you know, in terms of the European um, Parliament um, context as well, what does that mean for you know social democracy in um, Poland? Did you want to add anything to that, Shona, or we just get Matt? I don't know where she's gone. Sorry, I just um, it's unmute. Yeah, um, thanks. Thank you. Um, no, I didn't really. I'm just curious to know, given that you know, Poland's so so big, how much influence they have in all the the neighbours, particularly with um, the way Poland and uh, Hungary are going. But other neighbouring countries don't seem to be following in such a strong way. So I'm just curious about what your thoughts are on on that whole central and eastern part and how they influence one another. Yeah, they have. Um, you know, formal arrangements so they have Visegrad countries will get together and meet uh, which includes Hungary um, and Czech Republic for example so they have that the, the the influence between Poland and Russia is, is very interesting because in we talk about why doesn't the Euro, the European Union deal with this why doesn't the European Union step up on this issue 
And so depending on the issue and the mechanism that's been used, there might be the right of veto in the, in the EU or the European Parliament, for example. So they can work together. So some of, one of the reasons why um, the EU has been uh, unable to um, be so strong with Hungary is because the polls will say, hey, 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 you're not doing, not doing that. So there's that. Um, the other one is, in fact, I know for a fact that they, they actually were, there is that, um, that close relationship um, when it comes to politics and they all they copy each other. So um, this idea in, of, a, of finding a target and attacking, and it's been successful in Polish politics in recent times, you know, being able to gain a majority for the first time in post-communist Poland. And so you have Hungary next door thinking, well, hey, we can do that. And when Hungary is successful, the, the polls think, well, you know, just um, reconfirms what, what, what they're doing. So there's that as well. I wonder, and I've always been concerned that other parts of that other world will see what's happening in Poland and, and, and copy it as well, you know, find that target and just go after them when, when in a lead up to the election. Um, on, on influence as well, I, you know, I'm disappointed with where, where it's currently sitting, but you know, but it, you know, that's where the voters have gone. Um, I just think that Poland can be, because, you know, because of its size uh, and its history, it can be, it really can be a leading light in the EU. And, you know, that leading, one of the leading, the leading light in Eastern Europe as well, a, a representative of Eastern Europe. And, you know, for a time it was in, in um, um, a, few, a decade or so ago, the issue was, though, it was going down a path, you know, an economically liberal path. And um, so it was held up there as, you know, great, you know, look at what Poland's doing. Um, uh, uh, I'm not sure if that's the way it should go, but, you know, it could be it, and it should be with its you know, great history, you know, having, you know, taking into account what I've said around history, but, you know, it should be the leading light in, in Eastern Europe. Okay. I think we've got time just for one more um, question and we might leave there were any other comments to the online pub chat post the meeting, which we're all hoping people will hang around for. Matt, will you be in that? I've got my water here. Okay, so good. Have your water. talking about that. Russia, it's not, not vodka. <laughs> Excellent. Um, so Veronica, um, are you still online? Could you unmute if you are? Veronica Plasnik, have I said that right? Luckily, Sorry. I'm interested in that one. Yeah, it's about the role of Jew, Jewish Jews featuring in society now and how are they viewed? Could you answer it anyway, Matt? And make yeah, it, in Poland? Make that the final one. Yep, thanks, yes. Oh dear, they have, yeah, such, what a, what a, what a relationship. Um, um, oh yeah, it's, it's a real, I haven't actually touched on it tonight. I was I was initially going to, but it's it deserves um, a session on its own. To be frank, the obviously you know you only have to think back to to what I said earlier about the important um, relationship that the Jewish uh, community have made here, Jewish Polish community have made here in Australia. You know, members come out pre-war and post-war, post World War Two, and um, you know, it was in, it was in Nazi-occupied Poland where this this mass atrocity, where these mass atrocities took place, and I don't think that Poland really has been able to um, come to terms with that. Um, what happened on their soil for a number of reasons, and and. There's, you know, there's issues even today around anti-Semitism in Poland, the recognition of the Holocaust. Um, um, if a, you know, you've got to, if, if mention is made of the Holocaust in Poland, for example, 
um, and and rightly so, I guess you soon it's you know you you soon brought up in check. You know they soon you know it must be Nazi occupied Poland. Um, there's that, that debate. There's debate around whether Poles were collaborators in that in that um, at, at that time. These folks in the Law and Justice Party claim that they, they were not. Um, that in recent times has upset members of the local Jewish community, but also um, uh, the Israelis. And so diplomatic relations have been strained there for a while. They was getting strong, strained. Um, in fact, the president refused to attend a memorial service, president of Poland. Um, so there's that on, on the ground. So, you know, it's, it's a real, real concern. Um, yeah, I'm just being careful with what I say because I'm, yeah, it's, yeah, it, mm. no, it's just because yeah, some of the things I've, I've heard and seen, terrible. Mm. Yeah, okay. Um, <clears throat> does anyone, uh, Mary, I know you had a question. We need another question. We need to go and find a yeah, positive Yeah, I was going to say that sounds... <laughs> Mary, should we just quickly go to your question and finish off with you and then we'll definitely be then throwing to Julia to um, close the meeting. Yeah. So, Mary, you need to unmute. Yep. Great. That's it. Oh, mine, I can't do justice to this in two minutes. Yes. But the basic yep. underlying fact of this 1930s Europe financialization, banking mm. interests globally dictated and they had people in fear and, and up to today now that uh, a household budget is like how a government budget runs. It doesn't. And if you follow that John Maynard Keynes is against right wing Hayek um, and we've got current day Australian Steve Keynes Debt Watch. I don't know if anyone's heard of him and Bill Mitchell, who's on the um, website. You can read it all. But simply what his message is, says governments can spend in a way provided there's no inflation money without getting not having to getting into deficits you can have fiscal deficits in a parliament but that the what a government's got that ordinary citizens haven't got is their own bank the reserve bank and the reserve bank could write out tomorrow 6 billion for example for bringing in renewable energy right and and it's not a problem as long as there's not inflation and that sounds very simple and you have to read this again and again. I've studied it for years and I understand it really now. So Poland, right, um, it's, it, it, and the European Union is in huge debt, trillions, to the banking system in the USA. And I sound like a person who's got to sing about the bank, the bank of the voodoos in the background. But if you understand how macroeconomics works and look at Hayek, the right wing, economist versus Maynes, Maynard Keynes, and you look at Steve Keen, and um, modern day professors of Australian economics who've studied and worked in England about this too. And they are saying that's just a myth. They don't have to pay money, governments don't have to pay money back like a household budget. But they've got the whole citizens concerned that we can't spend too much or how do we ever repay it back? The only danger is, is inflation. You haven't okay. got inflation. I that's, think we've got it. That's the end of it. I can't yeah, that's, do that's, duty, But that undermines all the problems. And everyone's looking at other problems, like is it the, the, the Jewish problem in Poland or the other problem? Behind all those social uh, problems is this. Full stop. Thank you. I touched, I, I touched on the COVID situation just towards the end of the um, presentation. I think that if there is something to come out of it... Where is he? this will be an opportunity for us to have such discussions and yeah. not be able to be shouted down and to discuss these things. You may or may not agree with um, what's, what's being said, but, you know, discussions around what, for example, what Mary's saying, what others are saying. Um, yeah. The thing will be because, you know, because governments are spending a lot of money now yeah, to keep, keep things going. Um, uh, we're all in it together and we're all in the same boat. Well, no, actually, we're all in it together. We're in just different, different, um, not the same boat so much, but um, 
there's going to be less of an opportunity to pick off one another. And I mean, my countries. So, so I think there will be a, an opportunity, yeah, for, for, for this, for countries to come together and they're going to have to come together and, 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 um, and deal with the, the economic uh, and social fallout of what's happening with this, with this health situation. Um, as we know, it's, um, Hmm. You know, not linear. It's in, interdependent or overdetermined or whatever you way, way, way you want to put it, because the you know, the health in- situation at the moment is the COVID situation is having an impact on the economy, having impact on society. But that in turn, you know, is having an impact on on the COVID situation. So, um, as we know, you know, people some some pockets uh, uh, as there's some clusters. In Melbourne, even so, you know, and some some of that is based around um, um, social and economic background and class. Um, so yeah, the, but uh, that's a micro. But um, yeah, these discussions, I think this will be an opportunity to have these discussions, and we will have to have these discussions. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if we, you know, will we, will because we, there's going to be people who get up and say, well, you know, the way to deal with this is just be aust- you know austerity, austerity, austerity. Yeah. Yeah. There will be that that will come up. So we need to be able to um, have the discussions mm. and okay. be able to counter that. For that you need to read my article. You need to read my article on the Modern Monetary Theory Conference. To uh, <laughs> I argue that we should, that should underpin the Social Democratic Project mm-hmm. well, board. <laughs> yeah, agree. <laughs> but yeah. it's uh, yeah. not very popular amongst the mainstream yeah. economic, you know. <laughs> Um, you know, you know. Can I just jump in again? And I know Fabian's. I'm, I'm not on the yeah. executive anymore, but I know that you know, Fabian's have had uh, over the years many um, different speakers, um, and and um, it was the first time I heard this this idea, this crazy idea of the universal basic income. And I know there was debate in Fabian's uh, around that. Um, that's becoming a bit more mainstream and you know, people within the, I know people within the Labor Party, not the parliamentarians, but members are now seriously talking about that now mm. um, based on what's happening in the situation. But um, yeah, so, you know, just ideas like that are now starting to be discussed uh, more seriously. Yeah. I think yeah. we should mention that Bill Mitchell mm. did actually speak at our last face-to-face event, wasn't it? Um, not too long ago um, and I noticed Alan Cole has been picking this one up a lot on the ABC recently too I'm not sure if my internet held there so. mm. Mm. But the whole, and I mentioned in the AU funds before the whole point about because I wrote my PhD on this as well around less developed regions and that's the great benefit of billions of dollars have gone into the less developed regions of Poland and Hungary to um, invest in key infrastructure projects and human capital and social um, democratic, um, you know, policy. So, um, <clears throat> and yet you've got a government at the moment in Poland sort of, um, uh, you know, being a bit equivocal about their relationship with the commission on many issues to do with civil rights and political rights. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Um, but I think we might wind up at this yeah, point because yeah. it's getting late and we said we were going to only go to 8.45, so we're actually 10 minutes over. Sorry about that. Um, well, I just wanted to thank, he seems to have, screen seems to have frozen, but thanks, Matthew, for a fantastic presentation. Um, and um, <clears throat> I'm really, sorry, I've lost my notes here. Uh, fantastic presentation. Um, very comprehensive and illuminating on the issue. Thanks very much to all of our Fabian's members and members of the Polish community and others who have come on tonight to contribute to such a fantastic discussion following the presentation. Uh, I'm noting that the videos of the event will be on our website and Facebook. And I'm now gonna hand over to our Victorian Fabian's chair, Julia Thornton, to close the meeting and take you to an online pub if you should want to join us um, um, and continue the discussion there.